Hey, shalom brothers, shalom sisters, Bishop Nathaniel here. That's right, you know what day it is. It's Shout Out Tuesday. It is Shout Out Tuesday. And I pray you brothers and sisters join me every Tuesday afternoon on IUIC Events channel, where I will be reading your kind and inspirational letters, also thanking you for your kind donations, and also covering very important biblical information for the mental well-being of our 12 tribes. That's right, 12 tribes worldwide. So hope to see you then every Tuesday afternoon on IUIC events. Shalom. Phenomena, kick it against the bricks, lose your soul when that fire comes. We purify better than gold, got my Bible on, and that's all that I know. Where Babylon go fall, watch it blow. Hey, switching it up, the nation's gonna drink it. I'm talking to cup, don't care what you think it. Believe in the gospel, the godly stinking. The fires of heaven gonna gather for dinner to eat up the flesh, the wicked, the sinner. Your mama, your sister, your daddy, your cousin, you get their issue. If they mind, they don't repent. They Like we saw that picture today, that would probably scare, you know what I'm saying, people, honestly, because the red eyes and all that kind of stuff. I mean, he looked holy. He's a holy man, true enough, but just looking at the picture from first sight, that probably scares him out. Right, so the eyes was red because Christ uh, drunk wine in moderation. Okay. Why do you think that is? I mean, just me looking at it, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like, you know, he's very... You know what I'm saying? You know, like, you, know, you, know, you, know, like you know, somebody you don't mess with. You, you, know? You, know, you know what that is? That's that that's that psychological warfare they did to us in slavery. In slavery, they gave us images of black men as being monkeys. Think about it. They would give us images of black men being monkeys. Then they would put the white man and the white woman as being angels. That still affect us to this day. That still that still. Sometimes when I close my eyes, I gotta rebuke the thought that he don't look like that. Because in thir for thirty years, this is what I saw. So now when you bring this image into play, the true image is a fight. It's a tug of war there. That's why the white man spent trillions of dollars to keep me and you sleep. Right. To keep giving give us false images. Give me 1 Maccabees chapter 3, verse 48. I'm going to get right back up. to you. I'm going to show you something. 1 Maccabees chapter 3, verse 48. The so-called, yeah, I understand. But so-called white men, what they what they do is, what they have done is, they put things in place to keep, keep our mindset in a low estate. This is why we call each other niggas. Which niggas in the Bible, by the way, just mean black. Yeah. But... That's why we call each other. But we, when we say it, we're not saying it as an uplifting term. We're saying it in a term to uh, demean one another most of the time, right? So watch this. First Maccabees 348. This, this book of First Maccabees, chapter 3 and verse 48. And laid open the book of the law. So the book of the law is the Bible. It's a historical record book. Ours, right? Come on. And laid open the book of the law, wherein the heathen heathen is another word for nations it's talking about everybody outside of this nation if you notice you don't see the so-called white man on this on this sign because he's not an israelite right he don't come from the same ancestors we come from correct same thing with the so-called arabs the so-called chinese the so-called uh japanese we're not the same race of people we different races so he says the heathen he's talking about the so-called white man in particular because greece was who ruled at this time so he's saying the heathen opened up our Bible and did what? Had so to paint the likeness of their images. So he ran their what? Their images. So they took our Bible and they saw and read that the people in the Bible was black. 
and they changed the pictures of them in the Renaissance period, right? Yeah. During the time of the Renaissance, what does Renaissance mean? Like vintage style, like you know what I'm saying, old English. It, like mean, it means rebirth. That's rebirth. what the word Renaissance like, means. Okay. Yeah. In 193 AD, Rome fell. Okay. It was destroyed. In the 1400s, it came back into power. You understand? Yeah. When it came back into power, a man named Pope Alexander VI. Come right here, I want you to read this. This is the image of the beast right here. Cesar Borgia, this man right here, he was the son of Pope Alexander VI of Rome. His name was Rodrigo Borgia, right? Yeah. See there in 1492 to 1503, when he was the Pope, he had Leonardo da Vinci. You heard of him before, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Michelangelo, Donatello, those are the, the Ninja Turtles, right? Yeah. The Ninja Turtles are named after famous Caucasian Renaissance painters. They took the image of Cesar Borgia, this white man, and they gave him the new image of Jesus. So now the image you see of Jesus today was actually a replica of this man. They did that to us in slavery. They forced that on us. They forced the image on us. Matter of fact, when you look at this sign right here of the northern kingdom of Israel, which is our brothers, the so-called Hispanics, this man right here, his name was, uh, where is it? What is that, what that part is? Oh, this man right here was named Zanawapu. He was a Colombian king. This man right here. He was a Colombian. You know the Colombians, right? They're my brothers. They, they from the tribe of Asher. When you look at right here, Asher, those are the Colombians. Me and you from the tribe of Judah. They call us African American. We actually brothers and sisters. We just ain't been taught that. So they took him, this man right here called a Jesuit priest. You seen them priests that be dressed like that? You ever seen Sister Act back in the day? You remember that with Whoopi Goldberg? You had the nuns on one side and you had the Jesuits. These men right here, they dressed like that. When they came over here, they had the cross and they had guns, swords, and look at that, what's them is? Those are sticks. You see those sticks? Yeah. Now, if I put sticks up under somebody and people walk around with fire and I got them strapped to a pole, what am I about to do to him? They about to burn him alive. They about to burn him alive, sis. To make him worship what? No. Make him worship this image. Make him worship that cross right there. So this was forced on us. Now, if, if I got to force something on you, that means it ain't true. That means you won't believe it if I brought it to you because it's like, nah, that don't make no sense. That's not true. So I got to force it on you. I got to kill you to do it. That's what they did to them. Guess what? They did the same thing to us. Because remember, when we came over here to this land, did they let us read and write English for 200 years? No. They, they, they held us back from doing it. Why? So that, so that we would be ignorant to what the Bible actually says. We wouldn't read certain parts of the Bible. They actually had a Bible called a slave Bible in which they would take all of the scriptures that pointed to us being black, pointed to Jesus being black, and they would give us scriptures like slave obey your masters and then tell us that meant that we were supposed to serve them and that ain't what that actually means. Okay. You see what I'm saying? So that's what we that's what we had to do. We had to uplift our people's self-esteem. Cause like you mentioned, you said this man right here look kind of you know, I could tell he mean business, but yeah. that's kind of scary to me. You know why? Because they put that image in our mind as being scary, as being something to fear, as being something that's negative, right? But they put this in our face as holy and pure. But guess what? This man has had millions and millions of people killed. This man ain't killed nobody. This man was a just man. He kept God's commandments. Right. Remember, when they killed Jesus Christ, he was perfect. He didn't do nothing wrong, right? This, set, this is Jesus Christ right here. This is the depiction of Jesus Christ. Remember he just read to you in the Bible what he looked like? That's what he looked like according to the Bible. Now, remember what Jesus said before he died. Matthew 24, put it down real quick. Watch what Jesus said before he died real quick, sis. Cause I can say, I can tell your mind unlocking. You're like, hold on, this is making too much sense. I mean, it, it makes <laughs> it, it make too much sense. And it's biblical. Watch this, sister. Matthew 24. Matthew 24, verse 4. Watch this real quick. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 24 and verse 4. Yeah. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Why would Jesus say before he died, after I die, make sure that no man deceive you? Meaning what? Trick you. Right. Read. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. And do what? And shall deceive many. We've been deceived. The many goes into millions. Millions of people have been deceived by that false image. And guess what? This is why we kill each other. This is why we hate each other. This is why we change our sexual preference. This is why we do drugs. Because we're depressed. Because we don't see ourselves as God, nor do we see our brothers and sisters as God. We see him as God, and he scares us. Bring it you see what I'm saying? Yeah. They did that. That's a psychological thing. Since remember, everything that you've been taught had been a lie. 
So, I mean, like, where can I find a picture like this? You could, be, well, first of all, if you come to our church, we got plenty of images of the Renaissance. Matter of fact, grab that book bag right there. Let me show her something real quick before she leaves. I got a book in there called The Russian Icons, right? Where when you read, church? our church, we on 727 Gallatin Street. 727 Gallatin Street. Show me that one first. That's a good one. This is called The Early Spanish Manuscript, right? On the, on the, uh, front part of this book this is spain spain was ruled by black folks they was calling themselves the moors but they was actually israelites right. right so on the inside of the book i want you to turn to the back we're gonna find this same image in the back there it is right there okay. now you see this picture right here there's a man in the middle what color is he what color is he all these people black right now when you read this right here i want you to read it for me Christ, whose darkened flesh tones now give him an almost negroid cast. So, in this picture, that is who? Christ. Christ. On this image right here, they're telling you Christ is a black man. That's right. But guess what? Our forefathers painted this when we was in rulership. When the white man came in rulership, he painted a whole different picture. He gave us this. So now when we see this, we confused. Because we haven't seen it. So does he. So does I. We, have, we get pimples here once in a while because we eat bad and stuff, but, but for the most part, black people got smooth, oily skin. Right. Perfect skin. Same skin he had. This man got dry skin with, with hair that hangs to the ground. Your hair do everything. You understand? Now, and it flakes, right? So he said, I'm black and handsome or beautiful because black is beautiful. That's the way the world has been shaped because the first man and woman was what color? They was black, Adam and Eve. The Lord took them out the dirt. Look at that dirt right there. Look how dark it is. That's how God made Adam and Eve. They was black. He, bring, he made them from dirt. Now go to Song of Solomon. Hold on, I'm going to show us something about the hair texture Solomon had. Song of Solomon 5 and 11. Bring it out. Watch this, sister. So he said, I'm black and I'm beautiful. Watch what kind of hair texture he had. Song of Solomon, chapter 5, and read verse 11. His head is as the most fine gold. You know what it mean? He said his head is as the most fine gold. It's not talking about his head was gold. He had so much money, he sprinkled gold dust in his dreadlocks. That's how much, that's how rich he was. And this was what? What color was he? And calmly or, yeah, beautiful, right? Come on. His locks are bushy. Wait, wait, hold on. Whoa, whoa. Say it again. His locks are bushy. His locks are bushy. What you got? Right, and they bushy. Right, right, they bushy, right? Even when you, and when you, when you dread them up and get them nice looking, you understand, they be tight. Right? But then sometimes they, 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 they go out to a bush, like my hair and his hair. You understand? That's the same hair the wisest king that ever walked the earth had. Bring the same up. skin the wisest king that ever walked the earth had. So why should we hate ourselves? Why should we kill each other? Now, let me ask you a question. You like women, right? Yeah. So you, that, when do you think that started? Like, when you was young? I mean, honestly, when I was little, like, I mean, I never really just been... Right. Honestly, I'm, my childhood, I've just been a playtime boy. You know what I'm saying? I've always been out and about playing cards. Playing cards. Sports. And yeah, sports, yeah. Dominoes, you know what I'm saying? Just out yeah, the street. Yeah, yeah. You know I ain't never really just had an attraction for anybody until I really got into high school and college. That's right, I really right. Enjoyed. So I'm, I'm going to show you how you was born. Can I show you that real quick? Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 29. I'm going to show you something. Because me and you, your lust is different from my lust. My lust growing up, I wanted a lot of women. That's how my daddy taught me. You know, get, get hoes, basically. That's what he taught me, right? So when I got older, I kept that lifestyle going until I got an STD. Then I said, hold on, I'm tripping. You know what I'm saying? Then I got a girl pregnant at 19. I'm like, yo, I'm tripping. I need to stop. What's wrong with me? Why I keep going out here? Why I can't be faithful to my girl? Why I keep going out here cheating everywhere? What's wrong with me? But guess what? It started. It started when I was young. The the, the messages. Because when you cause when young men go around, they, they uncles and stuff, they say, how many girlfriends you got, bro? How, how many numbers you got in your phone? So we condition to think like that. Now on the flip side, basketball and sports, it put the same spirit on our women. Cause I played basketball, as you probably can tell. And I was, and I was a lot, I, when I went to college and when I even played professionally, I was around a lot of professional women basketball players and a lot of uh, college women basketball players. And because they gotta be so masculine on the court, it bleeds over into their regular life, right? So God got commandments in the Bible to change that spirit because it is a spirit. It's been deceived. Watch this. Read. He says it. 729. Watch this. This is the book of Ecclesiastes. Chapter 7 and verse 29. Come on. Lo, this only have I found, that God has made man upright. You hear that? God made you upright. Meaning, your, by the way your body is, the 
the way your mind was, it's all it was made perfected. It was made to go in one direction. Just like me. Right? Come on. They have sought out many inventions. But while we've been living, we've been sought out many inventions, meaning our own way of thinking. You see what I'm saying? So the things you probably saw, you playing sports, you hanging with your brothers and your cousins, that spirit of masculinity came upon you. Right? And you just started acting like that because, hey, this is what I know. Right? This is what you're used to. But God don't want that for you. God wants you, because how you get to heaven? Like I said, worshiping praising. Right, worshiping, praising. Give me that real quick, Matthew. You believe in Jesus, right? Yeah. Remember, when you think of Jesus from here on out, this is not him. Try to erase that out your mind. I know it's hard because you just learned it today. This is Jesus. Uh, this is a better depiction of Jesus right here, right? I'm going to show you how Jesus said you're going to get to heaven. Because me and you, we got the same goal. We trying to get up out of here because we know this ain't heaven. This hell. Look at our streets. Yeah. Look how we getting killed out here. Don't nobody go to jail for it. Right. right? Look how our own brother got his gun uh, pointed at us from a distance. We don't even know. We're ready to knock our heads off in the hood. Right? This hell for us. So we're trying to get up out of here. Our heaven going to be right here on earth. That's why when you say the Lord's Prayer, it say what? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Meaning what? The kingdom of heaven going to be right here. Because right. the white man in heaven right now, sis. Because right. right. he can come right down here to the hood, shoot one of y'all down. And they'll justify, they'll do a GoFundMe for him, and he'll have a half a million dollars in a day. Right. That's heaven. Right you feel me? When we see you on camera like George Floyd, we saw the dude kill him. Why the hell we had to have a trial? We saw him kill him. But he he get the satisfaction of having a trial. Me and you, we do that? No, they throwing a, they throwing a slammer. We ain't got to have no trial. Because we different. This day heaven is our hell. Watch this. I'm going to show you how to get out of this. Read. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 19, and verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So a, a man, a young man came to Jesus and asked him, What can I do to live forever? Eternal life means I never die. I'm immortal. I get the kingdom of heaven. I'm going to show you something too, bro. Watch this. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? So Jesus said, Why are you calling me good? Read. There is none good but one. Read. That is God. Come on. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. What did he say you had to do to enter into eternal life? Keep the commandments. All right, so you know that, right? So watch this, Leviticus chapter 20. God gave us commandments that we got to follow. The problem is nobody ever taught us. Nobody ever nourished us and took us under their wing and said, hey, you're going off. Start doing this so you could be on the track for the kingdom. Because even in the Christian church, they do what? Hoop and holler, tell you everything going to be all right, but grandma's still dying. We still poor, and we still paying them 10% of our hard-earned money, and they ain't done nothing for us, but a lot of us for years. Watch this. Leviticus 20. Leviticus 20, 13. I know you got to go. So this is the book of Leviticus, chapter 20. Because that's what Satan do. Satan try to pull you away. You got to hear this, sis. You got to hear this. You got to hear this. I'm going to wait till she get off the phone. She got to hear this. Because that's what Satan do. He, he, he'll, just, he'll send somebody to call us, or he'll have somebody, a homeboy pass by. Somebody hit us up in the DM that we've been waiting on. That always happened. Every time the word of God be coming out, Satan come immediately to try to pull it away from our brothers and sisters when they getting it. Right? That sister getting it. Real quick, sis, I know you got to go. I want you to hear this one last script. One last scripture, sis. Can we just discuss how we going to get our young daughters, our sisters, our brothers, how we going to get us out of this hell and get us in the kingdom of heaven. Right? Remember, God said we had to do what? Keep the commandments. Right? Watch this. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 20 and verse 13. If a man also lie with mankind as he lies with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. When a man lays with another man like he lay with a woman, meaning he put his thing in a, man, in a man's behind, the Bible says that's an abomination. The flip side, when two women are together sexually, that's an abomination. If we're doing abominations, we can't get the kingdom of heaven, sis. It's going to stop us. It's, it's, it's that one thing. You, on, you can be on track for the kingdom, but you got roadblocks in the way. Just like me. Certain things that if I continue to do it, these roadblocks going to be in my way, going to stop me from getting to my destination, which is the kingdom of God. Right. right? So that's what he's saying right here in this written, 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. That's what he's saying right here in the scriptures. See, the thing is, your church told you the law done away with. You ain't got to keep God's laws. But then if you went and slept with his wife, 
He'll say, hey, you committed adultery. Well, I thought you said God's law was done away with. If you killed his son, he'll say, hey, you're a murderer. That's wrong. But I thought you said God's law was done away with. If you don't pay your tithes, which is in the Old Testament, you don't find it in the New Testament, he'll say, hey, you ain't, you ain't helping the church out. You in sin. But you say, but I thought you said the law was done away with, Pastor. Why you got me doing all these things if you say the law is done away with then? Watch this. Read. This is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 6 and verse 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Who not going to get the kingdom of God? What do he call them? Read again. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? So who not going to get the kingdom of God? The unrighteous. So you got righteousness and then you got unrighteousness. Righteousness is you not being homosexual. Unrighteousness is you continuing to do it. See, the thing about this Bible when Jesus Christ died for you, he gave you a chance. Says he gave me a chance to turn from my evil ways that I used to do. Now he gave you the same chance. All you got to do is just change. You got lust. You got things inside you that you desire. But if it's against God, that's called sin. Right. We got to stop sinning because the unrighteous, which is sinners, can't enter the kingdom. According to the Paul. Paul's writing here. Read. Be not deceived. He said, don't be tricked. You know why he said, don't be tricked? Because he knew in the last days, pastors would come and teach you lies. Right? Come on. Neither fornicators. Fornicators, that's having sex with somebody that's not your husband or wife. You see what I'm saying? Which, like boyfriend, girlfriend, that's fornication. Come on. No idolaters. Idolatry is this right here. When you go to church on Sunday, when you celebrate Easter, which is not in the Bible, when you celebrate Christmas, that's not in the Bible. Our birthdays, zodiac signs, that's not in the Bible. That's something they taught us. Right? Come on. No adulterers. Adulterer is if I'm married and I cheat on my wife. Or I cheat with somebody else's wife. That's adultery. We can't get the kingdom of heaven doing that. Right. That's sin. Read. No effeminate. You know what effeminate is? That's a man that act like a woman. Okay. You ever seen boys like the men like that? Like they really effeminate the way they speak. They don't really want to be involved with a lot of brothers. They always want to sit with the women. Right? We do that to our sons when they're young. We let them put on their they, they mother's shoes and stuff. You see what I'm saying? The Bible says that's effeminate. Now, the same thing, the flip side for the woman. She's masculine. If a man that act like a woman can't get the kingdom of heaven, a woman that act like a man can't get the kingdom of heaven. Right. So God wants the woman to be feminine. And guess what? It's going to be a struggle. But we got testimonies in our church. I know a sister that played basketball with me in college. She was on the women's team. She was with women... Nine, ten years of her life. She married with a baby now. She married to a man, one of the leaders of our church. She married to him. They met each other here in the church. She worked on herself. He worked on his, himself. They got together. Now they got a baby. She's the happiest she ever been in her life. She told me she never thought she would ever be married and have children. She thought she was always going to have that delusion of being with another woman. How she can change and you can't? You can. You got the strength. You got this Bible. You got brothers and sisters to support you. That's this is right. what we're here for. We're here to support you. When you come into church, we ain't going to tear you down. Like right now, I'm not tearing you down. Right. I'm showing you that, hey, sis, you can do better. You can definitely do better. Why? Because you're an Israelite. That's right. The word Israel, that name, it means prince or princess that has power with God. Right. You got power with God. Meaning what? When you apply the commandments, God going to work for you. He going to show you how you need to do. And he going to have brothers, leaders, because we're your brothers. Right. And we're going to tell you, hey, sis, you're wrong. Correct it. And we're going to tell you when you're doing well. Since you're doing a damn good job. That's what you need. You don't need nobody tearing you down. We need to show you where you're going wrong and build you up. But the way you work rolling right now is wrong, according to the Bible, right? Come on, let's finish it. No abusers of themselves with mankind. So abusers of themselves with mankind is men that's involved in homosexual acts, right? They getting abused. Their body getting abused. Same with woman. Come on. No thieves. So if you're a thief, you're not getting the king. No covetous. Covetous is when you want somebody what somebody else got. Read. No drunkards. Drunk. Because you can drink, but you can't get drunk. Right? Come on. No revilers. Read. No extortioners Read. shall inherit the kingdom of God. Nobody that's doing these things shall inherit the kingdom of God. But watch what he say next. And such were some of you. He said some of us was doing the same thing. Because some of us may have been involved in some wickedness that God could have punished us for. But he decided to give us a grace period to get ourselves together. And we ran across this truth. We ran across the Bible and understood, yo, the spirit that I've been rolling in is the spirit of the devil. It's not the spirit of Christ. The spirit of Christ is, guess what? Keeping the commandments. That's how you're going to get the kingdom. Now, did you know that God had a dress code? 
for men and women. Did you ever hear that before? I thought it was come as you are. You know, right. That's what they taught us. My granddad a preacher, he said the same thing. Right. Come as you are. I said, okay, so do I stay as I am? Because I can't come to, to the Lord as an adulterer and he changed my spirit by me applying his commandments. But once I come to God as that way, I got to change. That's what, that's what repent. You heard the word repent. It just means change. Like I used to smoke six, seven, eight blunts a day <laughs> playing 2K, right, with my college teammates. But the Bible say, do what? I'm supposed to change that, right? Watch this real quick. This is first Timothy. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. Hello. Can you do the Romans 22 and 5 for it real quick because she got to go. I just want to get a one or two more scriptures before she leave. So you got to keep the commandments, get the kingdom. The spirit you're rolling in, you got to come out of it. How you come out of it? Having help. It ain't going to be easy being around your friends you're around now. Because they're going to say, sis, man, the hell with them dudes talking about, sis. God love you, God this. Yeah, God do love you, sis. But he calling to you right now. Because we just read out of God's word that if you continue in it, you can't get the kingdom. Right? Come on. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. What is a woman's garment? Right, dress, skirt. That's a woman's garment. So he said men can't wear women's clothes. Like you see a lot of entertainers and actors do. Why do you think they pay the black man so much money to dress like a woman? It's not in our nature and because we are the example to the rest of our brothers and sisters. So we do it and people say it's funny. More young men to do it. Not realizing that God's laws have spiritual. It's spiritual. When we do certain things in the spirit realm, it's evil against God. He allows certain things to come upon us. So when a man wears a dress, he act effeminate. I'll give you an example. Tyler Perry. Even when Tyler Perry is playing a role where he's a man, you still can see Medea. When he talk, you still hear Medea. You're like, damn, he not even playing Medea in this movie. But it's a spiritual thing, right? When you see Martin, you think of uh, Shanene sometimes. When you think of Jamie Foxx, you think of Wanda sometimes. Like, you remember these things from growing up. We used to watch it, and we used to laugh at it, not thinking nothing of it. Then our brothers start acting like that. We start acting like that. We like, where does this come from? They put it subliminally in these messages to deceive us. So God said, woman not supposed to wear what pertain to men. So what sh if a man can't wear a dress or a skirt, what shouldn't women wear that pertain to men? Not baggy clothes, jeans. Right, you're exactly right. Because there's a zipper in the front of your jeans, right? What's that zipper for? Right, for the man so he can, he can flip it out and do his thing. You ain't got that set of tools. You just pull it down, sit down, right? So God is now trying to get your mind to come back to that womanhood, that princess that you're supposed to be. Ain't nothing wrong with being a princess. It's the greatest thing on the planet. Why? Because you're going to get the kingdom of heaven and you're going to rule over the nations. Right. The spirit you're in right now, you can't rule over the nations. That's our role to be the kings over everybody. Your role is to be the princess that now get carried around on a pedestal right. when the kingdom of heaven comes. That's your role. But first and foremost, change your dress code. I know you probably ain't never really wore dresses before, did you? Not really. You feel uncomfortable in them? Not so much. Just, it's just not yeah, easy. Right. Yeah. I never, he was you never, never really did it. Yeah. Now you never really did it. Right. You can do it. You can do it. That's what the power of the spirit of this, of spirit of this Bible do for you. Because remember, the Bible, when you're reading the words in it, they're not just words. It's spiritual. Because everything we read in the Bible, like when my brother brought out the slave ships to you, did that happen? That happened. Us going, us having chains on our neck, them burning us alive, them giving us a, a, a different image of Christ than what the Bible actually says, That's all. that all happened, right? So everything we read out the Bible, 100% fact. The Bible is the is the greatest book on earth. It's the blackest book on the earth, and it's the truest book on earth. Everything in this Bible, every word in it is true. Your slave master confused us, and that's why we confused. Well, certain parts of the Bible say this. I'm confused. It's because nobody ever taught you. When you get the Holy Spirit, somebody gonna teach you the truth, and that's what you receiving right now, whether whether you know it or not. The stuff you receiving right now is the Holy Spirit, sis. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, 
from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.